Hey, it's Aaron with the Mowing in the Dark Lawn Care Podcast. Hey, this is Tony's Lawn Care Talk. Hey guys, Cameron here with the Lawn Care Life in Missouri. Hey guys, this is Dan White with Lawn Care Unscripted. What up guys, it's Phil with Phil's Lawn Care. And you're listening to the Turf Nerds. Live from Equip Expo 2024, it's Turf Nerds, a lawn care podcast with Evan Lindman and Greg Durbin, powered by Green Frog Web Design. Greg, we're here. We made it to the Bobcat booth, didn't we? We got to the Bobcat guys here. This is great. I'm excited. Hello, this is Greg. Uh, looking forward to uh, my show or my uh, my product and being able to talk here. Yeah, Greg's Man, show he basically took, is. He took over right away. My he, show. He did. That's basically <laughs> what it is. I just make him look pretty half the time anyway. So. That's right, right. So with us here today, Ron Scheffler uh, with, uh, with Bobcat, Senior Product Manager? Yeah, correct. Director? Senior okay. Product Manager for, for Bobcat Mowers. Okay, my Bobcat Mowers. This is great. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and talk a little bit, if we can, about the Bobcat Mowers. Um, wanted to see some of the things. What, it, what have you got coming out? What, um, uh, things that you might be excited about? Things, um, um, uh, whatever we can talk about. So let's go ahead and go. So Evan, you got any questions, right? Well, let's let's lead it off here. So we, Greg has the Bobcat stand on ZS four thousand, and um, Ron, you were saying that you guys were kind of the last to break into the uh, stand on mowers for Bobcat. Yeah, that's right. So before you know, Doosan Bobcat bought us. You know, we were Bob Dash Cat, a smaller privately owned company. So we've been in the mower business since nineteen fifty eight, actually. So we, even though Bobcat Company has bought us and we're newer in the white as, with, as far as Bobcat dress goes, we've been in the industry for a long time. But the ZS four thousand, um, we were one of the last ones to come out of the market with a stand on mower. But the thing that I looked at that was that's not bad that's a good thing we learned what people were doing right and we learned what they were doing maybe wrong or maybe not the best way so we were able to kind of mash that up into a crock pot and then spit it out with something that we thought people would really love to see and it's been pretty successful for us now greg how did you break into like how did you discover uh, tell the audience and, and ron like what turned you on to getting a bobcat mark because you were on the market and why'd you get one I was in the market, and uh, I met one of the other lawn guys out in the field, and uh, he, he stopped and talked to me, and I was using my 60-inch uh, walk behind on a sulky, and he says, well, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I said, well, I'm, I'm kicking around. I'm just, I just got started, so I didn't have a budget yet, and, he's, and he's, we started talking, and he, and, uh, he said, you, and, and it's funny because I've had numerous people tell me this. He said, I wouldn't use this thing when I first bought it. My son got, started using it and he loved it and then um, he said finally I got on it and hated it for the first two weeks and he says I won't go back to a rider no oh, wow and uh, it was it was so, really something else and and when I went into the dealer I go to wheels and blades over in commerce and uh, he had told me that that's where he goes and uh, so I went into them and the funny part is is they had that same conversation with me you're gonna hate me for two weeks and then you won't and you won't want to use a rider ever again yeah. or even get on a rider you know I have a stand on desk at, at work and I, the first week I used it, I hated it because I'm on my feet. I was tired at the end of the day. But I'm telling you, after the first week, I started realizing I had more energy at the end of the day. So then we, and that's all I did. I stood all day long. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. All day long. And then COVID hits. So I have to work from home for a few months. <laughs> and then I gained all my weight back, uh -huh. lost my energy. Oh, no. Here I'm, we go. Because <laughs> I'm sitting in there. Then I go back to the office, start standing again, and voila, weight comes off, energy comes back. And you're going to find the same thing on the stand -ons. You know, people say, I just want to sit. Oh, man, America, wake oh, up. No. <laughs> You're right. Let's get healthy, America. Uh, we're not getting thinner, so no. let's stand up on the more. We're all getting fat. I I rode, I was on X Mark Riders for the longest time, but then Greg, we were both, this is, we're kicking around this about five years ago. Greg, he, he got a stand on, and then my first stand on was the Cub Cadet Pro X 660, and then I got the Multi Force, and I, and I love the stand on in the sense of it, it still does beat you a little bit, but it, it, it keeps you in shape and uh, keeps you awake with the, with the sit down mowers. You can kind of take a snooze on it. Like as, as we're waiting for you to come over here, Ron, I was, I was sitting down there on your ZT6100. I'm like, man, I'm getting kind of tired just, uh, <laughs> just sitting here. And Greg, you've, you've never liked the, uh, sit down more for the sake of like perception though too, correct? Yeah, a little bit of perception. I'm blind in my left eye and I just didn't like everything behind me. Mm. I liked, and I was used to my walk behind. So I like being able to have everything right in front of me. And that was one of the things that I really liked about that. And uh, one of the other factors was is just that flip up deck. Yeah. And, and that's that's great. I love that. Especially and, since you had the walk behind before yeah. with the, you know, if you get on a particular slope or you're maybe you're near a pond or something, and you just don't feel comfortable riding it, mm -hmm. you flip it up, it latches and you can 
and walk comfortably behind our stand on. Yeah. That was one of the things that we kind of looked at and added when we launched our product way back. Yeah. And I think, t and Evan's got, Evan got into the standard because of mine. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we, we, we did a fall cleanup or not, not fall, spring, spring cleanup. cleanups a couple of years ago and I was testing out the uh, ZS4000. I'm like, Greg, I like this because it had the EFI, uh, it's a 26 horsepower with, with the uh, Cowie on there. EFI, super nice. I just like the controls and the uh, ergonomic. I think I think the mowing industry, Ron, you might know this better than me. These stand-on mowers are really becoming the next kind of crazy thing. Like it was always the traditional sit-down, but I really think that stand-ons are kind of taking a, uh, a new charge and um, leading. I mean, Greg said, uh, "How much was that? You you, you have spent uh, that years eleven thousand, about eleven or twelve. Uh, off time I had it's great that call. he went for the e the the, the EFI because we were talking about this uh, off air on the, the 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 EFIs. I would say they just sip gas as opposed to the carburetors, which basically just chug gas down. It's crazy. Yeah, I think Kawasaki states that they you'll save about twenty five percent fuel savings versus a standard carb engine, which is a big dollar amount, especially in today's economy." Um, and then with respect to, you know, with respect to the, the stand on mowers and everything, you know, besides using it as a walk behind, you were talking about uh, volumes, right, and the, how it's taken off. And roughly in the commercial zero turn market, stand ons are right around... Um, Right around 18, 19%. What kind of growth is that from up from where? Uh, that's up from single digits from about uh, 10, 12 years ago. So oh, it's wow. been steady linear growth. You know, uh, I think last year rough OPI numbers are right around 54, 55,000 units for the year shipments. You oh, know, wow. so, so it's it's continuing to grow then too? Continuing to grow, right? People are seeing the efficiency uh, from walk behinds, uh, which has been a standard, probably standard number over the last several years, not counting the COVID. COVID, COVID craze of getting products, but then from a sit-down standpoint, um, you know, it's it's still a full-blown commercial product. People are seeing the efficiency. You get more products on your trailer, and it's not as high-priced. The, the, the trailer space is huge because I had. That's what we're uh, talking about, Greg. Like, yeah, because the stand-ons we can fit more on there, right? Yeah. Well, I actually I had to take mine into the shop one time, and they gave me a rider as a loaner, and uh, th that thing was huge. <laughs> it was taken up. It took. I have a seven by twelve trailer, and it it, would, it took up half the trailer, and uh, and that's one of the things about the other because I can flip that deck up, and it allowed me to be able to push, uh, put in a. Uh, I put in my walk behind. I have one set of lawns on my Monday shift. Uh, that I take my walk behind. I had my stander, and then I had a push. Uh, and I was able to flip that deck up, and that allowed me to be able to get the push in. But if I would have had that rider, um, I couldn't have gotten. I couldn't have gotten all three on there. I don't even know if I could have gotten both two of them on. There. Yeah, and depending on your crew size too, your trailer size, the the stand ons you get. Um, you might be able to get, you know, two, three, a uh, couple, three standard units on a trailer. And now you got one crew and one truck and trailer crew going out. So you're saving money, too, on the on the other side, right, of trailering and trucks. So, And, of course, all the maintenance that goes with it. So it's really a financial type of thing, too, investment that you're that you're working on when you go look at the stand on. So Now, when we walked in this booth, Greg made the comment. I forgot, too, that uh, you guys have walk-behind mowers. I, I didn't really um, know that. Like, when did you guys break into the walk-behind mower game? Some guys use I We came from uh, the walk behinds. I did. The walk behinds are really good for cutting those steep berms. But Greg commented when you walked in, you didn't. You had no idea that Bobcat even made a walk behind, did you? Um, no, I didn't. I didn't realize because I don't think uh, my dealer carries the walk behinds at okay. all. Yeah, I yeah. don't think I've seen any walk behind in their office because they carry three or four different mowers. Well, I know with your dealership, they would have known all about the you know the previous green versions. Again, the first uh, Bobcat mower, nineteen fifty eight, was a walk behind product. It was actually it was actually a snow thrower with an attachment for a mower on it. So that's how long ago that was, right? But uh, for Bobcat Company, Doosan Bobcat twenty twenty one, we launched the full white full white units. So. It, lo it, it looks pretty and nice too, Greg, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It was, uh, I was, I was kind of playing around with it. And then you got your own sulky too, right? We do. Yeah. So we've got that. Uh, so I know, you know, you're, that's how you started out with. So we've got that for, for nostalgia. You Did know? That just for me. <laughs> <laughs> now the sulky game, Ron, I mean, you got, I mean, X mark has one. It's a lot of other off brand sulkies out there. What, what separates the Bobcat Sulky. I'm sure you pay a pretty penny for it, but is it durable? Because we, uh, we we had a sulky that we used on our uh, we had an X Mark uh, walk behind, and <laughs> we 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 are, we we are not even heavy people, and we bent and beat that sulky down, and I was I was gentle with it. So what's what's different with the Bobcat sulky versus other ones out there? Sure. Well, you know, part of that was with our design of the of the walk behind mower itself. We 
included the sulky, right? So we wanted to make sure one that it, it wasn't just an add-on or an afterthought. Oh, it comes with it. <clears throat> uh, no, no, you got to. It, oh, is, it okay. is an accessory, but we didn't want it from a you know people design things and then oh we should have thought about adding oh, yep. a, an accessory <laughs> and attachment and you know then it looks like a giant wart or something out on the product. So oh, we yeah. wanted to have, really have this thing fold up, be part of it, and it, and it does fold up nicely. Uh, oh, again, wow. trailer space. Thinking about that, but then we go through the the standard testings. You know we've got. Uh, a destructive uh, course at up in Wisconsin where the factory's at, and there's uh, bumps and things that you ride that. That's over. gonna be fun. Oh, Greg, we would have a heyday <laughs> there in this des- destructive course. I would. <laughs> I'll tell you after after about 15 minutes, I think you might get a little tired of getting jostled Same, around. But really, uh, holy smokes, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we go through our destructive testing, and and you know it's uh, fairly heavy gauge steel on that, and it should last you for several seasons. You know. Does it have um, uh, hard wheels, or is it uh, are they air tires? No, they're uh, they're um, no flat tires. No so, flat tires. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. We keep running over too much stuff at these yards. Everyone's getting their roofs done right now, Ron. So I'm like, oh, I ran over that. So the, the run flax are the, are the way to go. I, I think, and I can tell with your riding mowers here to pivot, Ron, what's the new mower coming down the pike? What's what's the revolution for the Bobcat mowers right now? And I see, are all the mowers kind of coming standard with run flats now? Because I, I, I feel like the pneumatic tires, it, don't even get it because you're going to run over stuff. They just break. Yeah, it all depends on your application. You know, if you're doing apartment complexes, you're going up and down a lot of curbs, then I, I would suggest the no flats. But you do trade off ride quality with no flats, right? So you have to weigh that out. And we see about a 50-50 type of uh, atmosphere out there. People who want the no flats versus the, the pneumatics. Um, so our our no flats, the first unit that you get that is a standard with the no flats is our ZT7000, our flagship mower. Yeah. Otherwise, we have we have a no flat tire option for everything else that we have. Okay. That's so your flagship mower now is that's that's, that's obviously your your most popular one too right now. Uh, what's that uh, retail for? Uh, the ZT7000 is uh, roughly around uh, between 17 and 18 depending on your dealer. That's yeah. that's that's a pretty fair price. That's kind of where the direction of all <laughs> all the mower prices are um, really going right now. Uh, what's What's um so what's 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 your new mower that's um coming out right? I, I thought I saw something that Bobcat's releasing some new mower. Maybe I got it wrong. Uh, so our our newest one we launched. Our newest, it, yeah. Yeah, our newest one that we launched at the beginning of this year was the ZT five thousand mower, and that mower is built off of um, a, a smaller frame, so it's lighter, uh, but it has all the things a landscaper needs. You know, high fuel capacity, larger. Uh, good, good transaxles, transmissions, ZT uh, 3800 transmissions, so you can have enough weight to carry a collection system if you need it. Large, uh, large drive tires, full mechanical suspension seat, and uh, good horsepower that you need. And then our AirFX deck. Uh, so a smaller frame, but our our best in cut class uh, quality of our AirFX cutting system. So uh, pure commercial mower at a lower price. And is that the 72 inch then or is that? Uh, that, a- that particular model comes in 52 or 61. Six, okay. All right. Tell us about the 72. We got this one set that's sitting right behind us here. Yeah. So this one we're giving away tomorrow at the at the Equip show. Here we go, guys. Uh, Get ready so, to enter it. Yeah. This is something, you know, got to be here present to win. Ron's going to personally autograph it too. Andy, get his number. There you go. <laughs> Greg already got his number. Holy smokes. There we go. <laughs> If, if someone wins it and really wants me to sign it, dang, bless it, I'll do it. There but, you go. You know, <laughs> um, but, you know, we we're talking about no-flat tires. So if you go stem to stern on this product, we have 15-inch no-flat tires. And now there are, you know, aftermarket no-flat tires out there, too. But this is a rounded profile, so it helps with your steering. You know, a square profile, might you might tear the turf when, on, on your turns. Uh, but this is a rounded profile. Uh, we have uh, anti-vibration foot plate for comfort, as well as an ultra-high back full mechanical suspension seat. And you got to be, you know, you got to be true to yourself. Dial in that weight, not your high school weight, Uncle Greg. Hello, but, you know, Greg. dial in your real weight. <laughs> Greg's getting up there, guys. Actually, so. I'm only 10 pounds higher than my high school weight anyway. Yeah, Greg actually looks good. I mean, Ron does too. But I, the, your foot suspension platform, I think that's becoming new on the um, riding mowers because I had the next mark. And for the feet, when you're just for my, my, my riding X mark, uh, the foot suspension is kind of a new thing. It was the seat, and then they kind of got the feet for that easy ride, correct? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's about right. Yeah, but we you know we have two different kind of uh, anti uh, suspension type of pieces on that platform, and the reason for that is one uh, one set takes out the shock loads that your feet will feel. Oh, the man. other one takes out the vibration, the horizontal plane. So huh. you get you don't walk off the mower. You're not feeling like your feet are vibrating. You don't feel I've those had that shock before. loads. Oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah big time. Wow. Yeah. It really? also comes standard with really? the, 
<laughs> we also come standard with the front light. So uh, that's on when you turn on the key switch. So you, and you know, I like that that's low. And, uh, and do, do you know why uh, the advantage of that is because one day I was on my mower and I had a headset because I was late. And I was working late and I was trying to uh, get something done. And there was so much dust flying around, I felt like I was in a snowstorm. Oh, geez. I couldn't yeah. see. So yeah, the yeah. light being low is, is huge. Yeah, right. There's a light Big on that. No, I, I didn't see it. It's right on the front. Hid, hid, yeah, hidden kind of right with the foot plate there. So yeah. it's kind of tucked in. It's but right, it's right, right where they're going to be cutting the grass I'm where blind. you need to see. I have see. to see that later. That's, that's actually, the lights are good because people can't see anything in this industry, trust me. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, but I, I like that, that that was on there. And I was talking with uh, one of the guys over at Wheels and Blades. And, and the funny part is, I happened to tell him about the headset on one day. And he said, you know, I did the same thing. Mm, okay, <laughs> we, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. we just got a kick. But you were also <laughs> telling me about the, uh, the bumper. Yeah, so our, our bumper is a rotating bumper. So if you're on a slope, you can rotate it one way or the other. It's toolless. And That's nice. Yeah, and it just swings all the way to the side until it touches the fuel tank. And that's uh, it's just for service, cleaning. If something happens to your engine, you got to take it out. It's uh, four bolts, and the whole thing comes right out of there. Makes it easy. Half the problem is these guys don't make easy stuff for us to take out. I'm going to sit there. I broke it. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and dealer, you know, service managers at the dealerships love that. You know, our, I think we have one of the easiest uh, units to work on. Um, we also have on the back end there, uh, besides the part that doesn't rotate, is a hitch receiver. So you've got a tow behind aerator. Just going to ask you about that. that. Yeah, yeah. It's a two inch square, so a standard receiver, uh, towable aerator, anything else that you want to pull behind, you know, time is money. And so you can be more efficient on the job and get more done uh, during the day. How much can that <clears> handle <throat> weight? Uh, with that receiver, um, I've, I've got. To, I don't know the towing weight off, off top of my head. Chris, we'll, have okay. to, we'll have to check on that. Yeah, all right. But I'll get that to you later. What I noticed, Ron, on Greg's ZS4000 and the other Bobcats here, I kind of like the deck adjustments. It seems like it's it's really easy to change the pitch and the rake on the deck if you wanted to, as opposed to a different mower brand. We have to dial in more screws and get it down. Uh, correct me if, if if I'm wrong. Is it pretty simple leveling out the the decks on um, this mower? If you because it looks like it's just the knobs and it has different yeah. sections like for it, which I think that's really cool and, and uh, there's ingenuity behind it. It, it. it makes it more easy for the hack like me that tries to level a deck. So no, it's really easy. And you know, one of the things you know, we're here, we're talking to, to each other, and I'd love to hear some more things about your your experiences on our products, you know, offline and stuff. Because I, I we want to improve constantly, improve the product always. Oh yeah, and and this is one of those things. Like we used to. Have have you know uh, 16 nuts and bolts each oh, side man. Four, eight, oh. eight each side to level the deck to pitch the deck if you want to stripe it and this is coming right from people like yourself who said make this thing easier and it's nice and simple it's just a simple cog on each one level it or tip it one way or the other as you need for striping or or uh you know, however you like For to cut your deck. Discharge yeah. distance on it, yeah, because yeah. we get more, if, 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 I mean, Ron knows this better than I do, but the more, I guess, pitch and rake, so if, like, the back part of the deck, guys, is higher than the front, you can get more vortex and more discharge, but I think you can sacrifice uh, cut quality, too, with that, though, too, correct? You, you can, yeah. The best t best cut quality, bar none, I don't care what anybody says, is that flat level deck. That's 100% your best cut quality, but then you pitch it, you know, a quarter, an eighth inch to a quarter inch, you can get even a better striping than you would on a normal deck. That's probably a across all brands, but I'll speak for myself that I know that's that's where we are. But probably one of the best things on this mower, this ZT7000 mower, is you have a two-speed foot pedal here. And that's what I was noticing. I was trying to figure out what that was. I'm like, this is new. I I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. So You press that down. You now, you can't cut in that speed, but you press it down. <laughs> so Greg was cutting on the transport <laughs> speed with his uh, <laughs> ZS4000. Was. was. That you can. Yeah, yeah, he had a need for speed. It hasn't he's changed. Yeah, yeah. He was, Greg, Greg was cutting with me a, a couple weeks ago. It cuts, but I mean, he was leaving some stragglers on the lawn because he was literally booking across it, but it was, it was leaving it still a really great cut quality for actually putting on transport and just going. I'm like, I would have slowed it down a little little bit but we were kind of racing uh, against the time so that that foot pedal uh, speed thing is kind of cool yeah and it goes you press that down and it's going 19 miles an hour that's <laughs> one of the smokes <laughs> that's one of the fastest zero turn mowers in the industry wow and uh you i know, never knew that if you're in the back 40 or you're cutting a hospital or a schoolyard or if you're in a an area you know a high area where you got multiple houses in a multiple lot you can leave your truck and trailer parked and you'll be more efficient instead of loading it back up going that's down smart. the road yeah now, when they come out with that, is this foot pedal pretty new for the, for the uh, speed this was, adjustment this, for this for this unit? This was around uh, late 2020, 2021, yeah. Oh, so it's so been it, here for it's couple, been a around, couple years. It's been around for a little bit, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, the horsepower. What horse is that? 
Uh, this one on the EFI model is 38 and a half horsepower. Okay. If you get the standard carb, it's 35. I think can mow down a field. Yeah. I, I feel like some of the more, I, I don't know if, if you've got feedback on this, Ron, yeah, in the industry, for the more that I use, uh, I feel like they underpower, like they have a great design with the mower, but they underpower the engine because we, we're up here in Michigan and we cut a lot of Kentucky blue rye fescues. And during the spring, Greg, when we're, you know, mowing, I feel like they don't, they, they don't have enough horsepower on the engines to be able to, and so we're like triple cutting everything. Is, is, is that kind of a complaint that, that you've heard or? No, we don't, uh, you know, when we started with this AirFX deck cutting system, so I, I think we talked about the baffle system underneath the air gap baffles on the discharge and everything. So on that AirFX deck, that we we developed that over two years and take some time. Yeah, and and it. Um, I went from the northeast all the way down to southern Florida, all far west from east coast to, all the way out to to Denver, cutting different lawns, different grass types. That's what I like to hear. Um, and yeah. we we were really and I I cut bahia grass eighteen inches in one pass with the Aero effects deck. Ooh, now, now I, nice. wasn't, I wasn't going 12 miles an yeah, hour. It was, right? it was going slower. I'm, but I'm using my head. That's the power of yeah. what it's able to do. It, 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 I, I'm sure it left a nice discharge, didn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it was sh it was shooting out. Um, and in some cases, you know, we saw three, three and a half deck widths at 61 inches. Wow. Putting that putting that grass clippings out. Now, you know, quality of cut isn't just making tall grass short. It's right. It's your clipping sizes have to be different. They all can't be five inches in length or you create thatch. Oh, goodness. Um, you know, uh, the deck is also cleaner at the end of the day. So you're, you're, not, you're spending less time, uh, you know, cleaning up and more time cutting the lawns, which is what you want. That's where you're making your money. Now, you Greg, know? why don't we tell them what we, so we did this the other week. I've, I've done it on, on my mower too. So on the ZS4000, so we took off a little bit that small baffle there, and we're getting way to, uh, towards the discharge. We're getting way better cut quality, and just I, I feel like that baffle is just there to block stuff from shooting out. But Greg's not having to clean out his deck nearly as much. It's probably not recommended, but if it's, I, I always say, well, if it's bolted on, then you can take it off. That's kind of the general. <laughs> have you heard about yeah. this, Ron? Like you can't, like, you can't say uh, it. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, debunk I, the myth. I, I, well. I, what I'm, what I'll tell you is that that baffle is there. That end baffle by the discharge side is there to help with the discharge okay. and the dispersion of that. Because we all mow with our discharge chute down, don't we? With our discharge chute down, yeah, with, down. The, with the, yeah. with the, the correct operating position. We right? do. Okay. Yes, okay. I know okay. what you yes. mean. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's part of the whole the whole design, right? Shoot down, and that discharge baffle is there for it to help with that dispersion. Well, maybe so. it's anecdotal because say you had the discharge shoot up because we took it off. Greg did comment there was less clumpage there and there, uh, uh, underneath the deck, and I feel like the discharge was more evenly dispersed and farther. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just from me mowing nonstop and. Greg well, you, ha you haven't seen too. mine yet, too. Uh, yeah. you, you noticed it more in yours. You've got that multi-force. So, um, but um, trying to think what else I was going to ask you. Can they put a bigger engine on that uh, on the standards? Because it seems like if you have a the, the larger the motor, uh, you got a little more power. I was talking to somebody one time, and he said with a with a bigger engine on there, he was getting a little better, um, a little better discharge. It wasn't having to do it. Can they put something bigger on yeah, there? Yeah, we or? we have room on the product to do a, a larger horsepower engine. That's something okay. that you know if there's there things, go, Greg. if there's different things that you'd <laughs> like power. to see, yeah. you know, you guys are landscapers. I want to take that information back, and we say, okay, let's let's see where the tea leaves read, and who's all who also is asking for a higher horsepower engine to stand on or. Pick, pick an accessory or something that we don't have that maybe you want to see, right? That's the type of thing from VOC efforts. Well, we say this in every podcast, though, Ron, is Tim Taylor would say for home improvement, more power. That's, yeah. that, that's, oh, all, oh, oh, that's, yeah. that's all that we need is <laughs> more power. But it's so, it's, I mean, so with the ZS4000, I don't even know, he has a 26 horsepower. How bigger of an engine could you put on that? Uh, I think in that footprint, I think we could... Like uh, 30 or... I think we can get up to just underneath 30. The way that that is, there you go, the Greg. way that that is uh, put out right now, and or designed right now with that platform. Thinking of the engine blocks, uh, if we do anything else, I think we'd have to just check the placement and size of it, right, and see if we can. That's fit neat. In. That that, yeah. that really isn't. That, that's that's reassuring. So, in case your engine ever blows up, Greg, there you go. Well, one of the things I did like about it, though, when I was um, when I was looking at purchasing it, I asked about a striping kit. And uh, the dealer said, you don't need one with this. Yeah, you, you and, don't, yeah. And I've been very impressed. I've been very pleased that, uh, that I haven't had to add anything. And uh, it's, been, it's been a joy to be able to see some of my cuts. And I've, 
I get so many compliments from my clients saying, man, that's a nice cut. That's great to hear. I mean, especially after, like I just got done saying that RFX deck was two years of a development time, right? I, I'm really grateful to hear that. I mean, we do offer a striping kit, yeah. but, but you don't. You're right. You don't need it for our, for the RFX deck cutting systems, yeah. You know, I'm biased towards my brands, but I've mowed on Greg's more enough. I am impressed with how the Bobcat stripes. I think half the striping battle is putting big rear tires on the back. You want like a 24 inch really wide tires. That's that's what really helps with it. But I mean, Greg's mower stripes great. Like uh, he'll send me pictures. I'll be like, oh really? <laughs> Holy smokes! So, like that looks good. But Ron, as we um kind of kind of park the mower back into the trailer here, what uh where so what? What kind of wisdom nugget do you uh, do you want to leave our um, listeners here with um, with, with mowers and, and everything that uh, we, we talked about? Woo our listeners on over to Bobcat. Like, what's your final charge and uh, hurrah, oh, guys! And by the way, it's Ron Scheffler. He is actually Scotty Scheffler's brother, the uh, PGA Tour golfer. So <laughs> no, he's not. Really? Yeah, no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I get that actually quite a bit, you know. <laughs> but I do have a cousin who has that name. So that's funny. When people ask me, Are you related to Scotty Scheffler? I'm like, well, yes, I am. Oh, yes, just I not am. the golfer. Just, yeah, just say yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I would say, you know, some of our mores, what we did not touch upon and, and what I would impress, you know, we're all in the business of making tall grass short, but why Bobcat mowers? And I'll tell you, if you were to sit on this unit, and I don't, I, I saw you sitting over on that one over there. If you haven't noticed, our handles are at an angle. Our foot pedals are at an angle. The touch points are at a particular angle so that when you are moving in a particular position, when you put your foot on the deck lift, when you grab the handle for your deck lift, it's at an angle so you're moving in an ergonomically friendly way. Our controls are up front and up high so you can see them at all times. And, you know, these guys are on the mower. You guys know this, right? You're on the mowers long hours every day. Comfy. Yeah, and I don't want you to be wiped out at the end of the day. We really took really took our time and developed it. And yeah, it might cost a little bit to add that bend here or there on the forming of some of the sheet metal that we make um, or those almond-shaped handles. They're more comfortable than the foam pieces that, you know, think, oh, this, they're not as soft. No, you Try it out. The user experience is really second to none in that in our in our commercial sit-down mowers. I'd love for you to try them out, you know, not only just the user experience, but servicing them, right? That's part of it. You guys do your own DIY stuff, too, so. We, we service all the time. I'm, I'm always wrenching on my stuff when Greg has a problem. He, he tries to ha uh, ask me, and I'm kind of a hack of a mechanic, but I can get it done. But that's, that's the number one most important thing, right? Well, for me, it's I'm not a mechanic. And that's, um, you know, wheels and blades, these guys are awesome. They've done incredible stuff for me when, I, when I've taken my mowers in. And, and uh, for me, it's just um, I, I take it in, I go grab my other mower while they're working on mine, and then uh, I come back and get it. So for me, I like, I like being able to have some of the, just be able to surface it. But, I mean, I do my oil changes. I do a couple other things here and there. But for the most part, any of the big stuff, I just take it to them. And uh, time is money for me. So if I'm out cutting while they're doing the work, then that works out best for me, I think. Yeah, you know, I had a, I had a landscaper a um, year or two ago that bought a ZT7000 mower and he, the rotating bumper, and he said, you know what? He goes, um, your mower saves me money. He said, I was able to, he said, I was able to fix my mower in the field. It was uh, something on the engine that he had in his glove box to fill it. I think it was the fuel sender. He goes, I had to replace it. And he said, I was able to do it. It took me three minutes. He said, previously in, in other mowers, it would take me a half hour and I had to put it in the lift on the shop. He said, wow. you, you, you literally saved me money. So, so that's an easy uh, detachment then, right? It's just a... Yeah, it just rotates. You do the, the main pin on there just is toolless. Okay. Just loosen it up. That's a big bolt. That's simple. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Well, Ron, thank you, guys. You you heard it from the horse's mouth. If, if that's a if 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 that's a compliment, thank you for hopping on the show. <laughs> or in I'll Kentucky, take you can take, take it. it. Yeah, I can take it. There, yeah. no uh, no uh, pun intended. But Ron, thanks. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank Anytime. you. Appreciate it.